Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Tim Goulet, Vance, and Franco about season three of Tall Boys, which is premiering Tuesday, January 25th on CBC. Welcome to the show. Thank you all so much for being here. Yeah, hey, thanks for having us, Speedy. Yeah. It is going to be, be great. Here. I'm so excited to chat with you. It's so exciting. A new season. Goulet, first, let's start off. What's your favorite thing about sketch comedy, man? What do you love most mm. about it? Uh, I love uh, fake blood, man. It's mm. truly uh, <laughs> <laughs> nowhere else. You know, in, in sketch context, it's funny. In real life, uh, blood is not all that funny. So yeah. I do love that. <laughs> do you guys find, like, Tim, I don't know about you, but I can basically watch horror movies now because i just know just watching a lot of documentaries that is corn syrup and it's fake like are you the same way a little bit too no i get swept up in the tension and (laughs) the movies i love horror movies but i'm always on edge even though i know it's all you know trick of camera costuming and stuff i'm loud and vocal and will respond to whatever stimuli pops on screen i know it it, it, (laughs) it's pretty crazy there i mean Lance, I mean, for my viewers and everything, you know, Tall Boys, Tall Boys sketch comedy. Well, can you tell us quickly about it and how the group kind of came to be a little bit quickly? Uh, we're just uh, four stand-ups who decided to jump into some sketch. Uh, and uh, we <laughs> took our, our uh, absurdist views and threw them together in a, in a format uh, two, of two minutes, uh, top, two page tops. Uh, and we've been doing we've been doing good. <laughs> it's so great. It's so different. Franco, what's the process, too, about kind of um, you know, brainstorming with the boys about what you're going to kind of do and what you're going to do for each season. I know season three, you went bigger. There's a lot of cool things. You got Paul involved with Kim's Convenience, which is amazing. What's kind of the mindset kind of seeing what's going to make the cut for different seasons, Franco? I think we just, uh, usually we have a pitch meeting and everyone comes in with ideas and then we kind of just riff on it. Sometimes someone has a fully formed idea where it's like, okay, that's the sketch. Just go write it. And other times it's like, okay, why, why don't we throw this in? Why don't we have a turn over here? Uh, what is this character? And then we read it. And, you know, like a lot of times you'll write something. I'm speaking from personal experience where you, you're like, this is a great idea. And then you read it at the read through and you're like, this is a horrible idea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then that's just like usually that's part of the writing, too, is uh, writing is rewriting, as uh, many professors say. And so it's like, yeah, first drafts sometimes don't hit it. Sometimes there's a turn that's missing. Sometimes things need to be cut out to move the we got to get to the action sooner. So there's like a lot of formatting and weird stuff, but uh, that's generally the process. A hundred percent. And I told you before, you know, I was going to tailor specific questions towards this is kind of a free for all. What's harder in your opinion, stand-up comedy or sketch comedy? Are they both kind of the same? Anyone kind of take that? Oh, I I, I feel like they they have their own difficulty, you know, stand up. You're there by yourself. That's the one thing you get all the glory, which is nice. You write all the jokes yourself. It's fun. But if it goes wrong, there's no one to blame but you. But, you know, when you work together in sketch, uh, you know, I can always throw Vance under the bus whenever. (laughs) (laughs) That is my go to. (laughs) Vance, you you stepped on my line. You know, it feels good to have that safety net. (laughs) Yeah, not just even, like, uh, fellow actors, just, like, crew members, just, like, production <laughs> assistants. I usually, like, really screaming at them and, and blaming them. Absolutely. We're trying to have our Christian Bale moments, you know? Just an audio leaks of us yelling at people. Well, if you I... could do stand-up with an intern, that would make stand-up much easier. Because then you just blame the intern. I remember doing an interview with Brett Ernst, who is a stand-up comedian, and he's also in Cobra Kai. And I asked him about, usually I don't get into, like, I want to keep it light and fun, right? And I asked him just about, like, hecklers and stuff. And I didn't realize that, like, he had a show the night, <laughs> like, that, like, the night before our interview, that he just got into it with a heckler, and he just went off. And I was <laughs> like, and I was basically like, did this like happen? It's like it happened last night. Absolutely. And I was like, I did not know that. It just kind of went off, basically. I mean, with sketch comedy, you're doing your own thing. I mean, I guess you could heckle each other, but no one's really gonna be there to heckle, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. interesting about stand up where just like you have a show planned, but uh, just because of one person in the audience, mm-hmm. things can go derailed and people witness a completely different show for that. <laughs> night. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I think like the some of the trick is like it looks like it's on the spot, but it's really a monologue, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, but if you do it so well people think it's a dialogue and then they talk back to you like no 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 that was <laughs> this is all this is all planned ahead of time is there yeah. one of those things too with sketch comedy vance um where you know there's situations where you have kind of an idea for a sketch or a bit and you're putting it together and does it become sometimes like unpredictable sometimes in terms of how it's going to kind of translate into actually when you film it and everything, you know, it might be either way around. It might've been good on paper, but even better on screen. Maybe the other way around where it didn't pan out as well. It's like, oh, we filmed it. Like does that, what's that process like sometimes of getting it from script or like doing it to actually like on TV or on, on the screen Vince? Like if I could cradle a, a baby that it came out of my brain and make sure nothing happened to it, it never changed. Till it got on screen, we'd be m- making way more money than there was. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was wondering so like, where what? I was going for a second. I don't know. You I'm just, I just are mean, you sorry, talking about a literal I'm, baby? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'd be rich. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, my mind gets crazy sometimes. Um, so uh, what I'm saying is like, there's so many different factors that happen between uh, first draft and uh, final thing that you see on television. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's so unpredictable, but I think that's the one wonderful part about like being in television is the co- collaborative creative processes. Uh, you're not only working with us being the creative heads on the show. Yeah, we're not the only painters in the room. Like our editors are painters too, and like we have so many different wonderful creative minds on this process. I think it would be maybe a disservice to you know um, not include any of you know the ideas or the fuck ups the beautiful blemishes that happen excuse yeah. my language light and fun light and fun and <laughs> uh, just, this uh, answer is just a roller coaster I love this <laughs> 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 sorry one second I'm gonna go off screen and uh, out of line. so what uh, one can we just I mean, ask Vance uh, more questions so for the rest of the interview, guys? Is that, are you guys cool? <laughs> okay. This is why I'm quiet, because I'm just like a kettle. Like, <laughs> this was like a bit, I'm pretty sure. I feel like that was just a bit that you're going to do right now. Well, I don't um, appreciate you're not taking anything I'm saying seriously. Let's cry for Um, Tim, you know, season season three, January 25th, CPC, you know, um, um, exciting some new stuff um what can we expect from this from what can viewers I, expect i mean as always we try to top ourselves completely yeah. uh for this next season i'm i'm really like this season i'm happy with it being a i think it's a bit of a love lad- letter mm-hmm. to the cbc and canadian television we yep. got paul sun hyung lee from kim's convenience yep. doing a cameo in a few episodes and we also throw tribute to other uh cbc's shows from the past that we love and inspired us and put our little tall boy spin on it and uh i i just can't wait for people to see it uh yeah really good has it hit you that it's coming out so soon i mean it's i feel like just creating is a weird thing because you know you put together this thing it's good to go it's ready it's in the can and then it's kind of like the waiting game a little bit but now you're doing kind of some press and everything like i said has it hit you that the, the season's coming out soon not yet, no. I, I, I first season, I, I felt a lot more anxious about it. Second season, a little less. And this season, I think, I think there's so much happening in the world as well that yeah. like it feels like I finished that and I've moved on, you know, yeah. in certain ways emotionally. But I, I'm sure once I start sit down to watch it, that that always gets closer to the date. Yeah. My 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 anxiety of like, oh my god, I hope I hope my face didn't do something weird on camera. You know, that will that will start build that internal uh, narrative that I have about myself. Those those thoughts will start coming up and. Then it's excited to watch it and then be pleasantly surprised, be like, oh, actually, my face did do that thing. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, to add to that a little bit too, Frago, I mean, the process, I mean, you know, comedy, in my opinion, seems to be one of the hardest genres to, to write and kind of create these days because times change. There's an expiration date on certain things, you know, certain things that are were funny aren't funny anymore. Um, do you find now that, like, comedy like like other genres too like dra- drama and everything comedy is becoming kind of an art where you really have to also pay attention and be a lot more articulate i feel like because you kind of have to talk and discuss and make sure kind of there's fits and everything right Franco? it's an interesting thing now comedy the evolution of it so to speak 
Yeah, I think it's like really changed. Like, I think part of the appeal of a show like SNL is that you can see a new thing and they're kind of t uh, tackling a topic every week. Same thing with South Park. So there is a challenge in like, okay, well, what's the world going to be like? Is this bit that's kind of a little bit about the pandemic going to be working, you know, in Jan on January 25th, 2022, mm -hmm. while we're writing in March 2021? Uh, so those things are like fun and kind of uh, exhausting challenges. But uh, yeah, I think comedy, you always want to be as present as possible. Yeah. The illusion has to be like, hey, we're in this room right now. That's kind of the joy of real life comedy where it's like, hey, this person is drunk. Let's make fun of him. I know I have a monologue prepared, but the show is about me versus this person right now. <laughs> and so <laughs> I'm about to fight. Like, I'm just talking about the fights I used to get into. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, what you get, pull out your gun in the show. Um, but yeah, I think it's like, yeah, comedy is very interesting. And it's like, you try to make it as present as fun. And, you know, we were, uh, and you just want to communicate to the audience, hey, uh, I feel like I said this in the other thing, so I feel like I'm, I'm on autopilot right now. But it's like, you want to convey to the audience, hey, I'm also a crazy person too, and I see what you're seeing. Uh, and it's like, if you if the joke is about like, I don't know, like how Nokia's are like so annoying, the person's like, yeah, I know I'm crazy too, but that was yesterday. You gotta talk about my crazy today. Uh, so yeah, comedy is interesting in that like, there's a lot of nuance. You have to really understand the audience and you also have to uh, like really empathize with an audience that is like, like you, weird, flawed, and imperfect, and and you want to reveal that raw side, and also you want to have fun with it because it, it's funny to show your pubic hair. Anyways, next question. Frankel just delivering <laughs> like Frankel just delivering Mona Lisa answers here. That was, <laughs> that, was, that was great. Hey Vance, how's it going, man? <laughs> Dude, I'm just being my fucked up Picasso over here. <laughs> trying to face and shit. <laughs> We're gonna go around with Star Vance. What's your favorite thing about being on Tall Boys, being part of the Tall Boys fans? Uh, oh man, we're in a rock band. Uh, this is so cool to be able to feel like uh, going into comedy. I wanted to tell jokes because I think I fancy myself pretty funny, but I never expected to be in uh, like it feels so parallel to when I was playing music out in Edmonton. It's just yeah. it's so fun. Yeah, yeah. it's just. Gulad, what about you, Gulad? Uh, for me, it's like definitely those moments are like, we're just hard laughing at an idea, you know, yeah. like that to me is like really cool. I'm like, because it, a part of me is like, man, I used to do this at jobs that didn't pay me to do this and now I'm getting paid to do this. That's yeah. nice. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Tim, what about you? Uh, to be a, in a team of tall people, but not have to require physical prowess. Like it's nice that <laughs> you get to walk around like a basketball squad, but at no point do I have to, you know. You're just drop waiting a for those YouTube court. comments on our channel to be like, "How tall is Tim in real life?" Now? <laughs> <laughs> You're just asking for those. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and I'm gonna keep it vague. All right, <laughs> you want, that's, a, that's the thing when people ask about your height. You never want to give a direct number because you could be wrong. Yeah, that's it. Franco, what about you? Uh, the camaraderie, you know, you, you joke around and then it's your job. That's crazy. That's wild. And also the craft service. Um, for sure. <laughs> are you fans of, now, disclaimer here, these are not my dad jokes. I have a lot of dad book, dad joke books. Are you guys fans of the dad jokes? Do you enjoy a good dad joke? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Because you happen to be yeah. on with a dad joke connoisseur. Like, I have them rapid fire. Like, Gula, we went to that restaurant on the moon last week. Such good food, but zero atmosphere. <laughs> or you know franco bit. franco i was telling you about that kidnapping that happened but it's okay he woke up <laughs> <laughs> or you know vance you know that that summer job at the shoe factory you know um we both quit because we thought it was soul destroying ah uh, yes uh, <laughs> you know and tim yeah. next time you come on the show you'll have to wait because my next uh joke uh about construction i'm still working on it so you'll have to uh, you, you'll have to wait for that one come on i had to I, got my show. I give that last one a four man i think it's because there was in such a rapid succession that then it it there was a diminishing return after the first one. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like, I mean, a lot of people are gonna, gonna our YouTube channel's growing and it's pretty successful. Yeah. I'm like, we get kind of that, that one comment is like, you always say the same dad jokes because those are the ones that hit. Like, <laughs> like, like, that's the act. Yeah. <laughs> I love dad that's jokes. That's a touring like, show. 
<laughs> I love dad jokes. I feel like the issue is they're always a little bit of homework. You have to piece together the, the pun that just went by in a second. Yeah, uh, like, it's yeah, just yeah. tough. Like those are like my four. Like I got a bunch, but I always go to those. But now I'm gonna have to get some new material because <laughs> I feel like now it's like the last one. Gentlemen, this was such a blast. Thank you all so much for coming on Pop Turn of chatting. Seriously. Hey, thanks. Oh, for thank you for yeah, having thank us, you, Peter. What thanks. a blast. Okay, yeah. so CBC. January 25th, Tuesday, Tall Boy Season 3. And could, can people like plug away where they can follow you on social media, keep up date with everything a little bit? Yeah, uh, follow Tall Boys is a show on all social media platforms. That's yep. Tall Boys with a Z. We're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. And then personally, you can follow me at Tim Blair on Twitter, but the eyes are spelt with L's. And that's confusing as hell, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's Anyone else? Uh, yeah, you can uh, follow me on uh, Twitter as well if you want. It's Gulad, G A T U S, and then L E A D. One of you uh, doesn't have an Instagram, right? I don't. Yeah. Okay. I was about to say there was. Yeah. I was. I was like. Yeah. One. One doesn't. But uh, Vance. Vance and Franco. You guys have Instagram, right? And Twitter. Yeah. Do. You can follow yeah. me on uh, at Franco Wins or uh, follow me at Tim Blair with uh, L's instead of us. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he posts through Tim Blair. Yeah. I'm creating, I'm creating a fake account. Vance, we can follow you on Instagram and Twitter as well. Yeah, just first, last name, real simple, easy. Add me a friend on Facebook. I'm back, baby. Amazing. We'll get to a thousand followers. <laughs> a thousand friends. Sorry, not followers. <laughs> friends. It's Facebook is about They're friends. called followers now. Like on page. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's not wow. likes anymore. It's it's not likes. It's it's followers now on, on Facebook. That's why oh, I guess really? happens when they buy Instagram, right? They kind of, they kind of yeah. all, um, that wasn't a joke. That was more of like a fact, like, but uh, no, yeah, it's, <laughs> no, it's, 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 no, it's important to know the meta, the metaverse is coming for all of us. This has been pop turn. If youtube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes, pop turn.com has other content as well. Tall boy season three, January 25th on CBC until next time. This is Tim Goulet, Vance, Franco and PD beats signing off. Oof. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.